In this video, we're gonna visit a mythological creature from ancient Greece that you think you know in my most detailed sculpture ever. I'm gonna recreate Medusa like you've never seen or heard of before. This video is sponsored by Mistplay. More on them later in the video. Medusa is one of those characters that is really cool. She's been portrayed in TV shows, comics, movies, generally in the same way. A stunningly beautiful woman who, if you gaze upon her snake-headed face, you will turn to stone forever. And the commonly known story of Medusa goes a little something like this. There was this woman, she was very, very pretty. So pretty, in fact, that she made Athena jealous of her beauty. Unfortunately, these Greek stories are so explicit and horrifying that I can't actually tell you much detail about what happened. Suffice it to say that Athena punished Medusa, transforming her into a creature with hair made of snakes that if anyone gazed upon her, they would be turned to stone. And this is what the story of Medusa became, but it's actually not the very original image of Medusa. There's this great video by Jake Doubly Do that explains basically that there was this period in Greco-Roman art where everything became more and more beautiful just because of how art was evolving. By virtue of that, Medusa just sort of became beautiful in the story too. But the original Medusa was far more horrifying. Now some of these depictions date back as far as 540 BC. Here's another one from 575 BC, even older, where you can see some of the gorgoned details on this character. These tusks emerging from the mouth and a, and a long tongue poking out of the face. I'm using that as inspiration. A much more round-faced, more heavy-set Medusa with wide, frantic, horrifying eyes with locks of hair, each of which was made up of a hissing snake. Now the original Medusa is also depicted, as you can see here, by this vase in 480 BC as having wings, but I'm just going to keep it to a bust, the shoulders and the head of Medusa, depicting her gaping mouth and her gnashing sharp teeth. But another lesser known ancient descriptor of Medusa is her beard. That's right, ancient Medusa, OG Medusa had a beard. And because each lock of her hair is made up of a hissing snake, I choose to interpret her beard as being made up of a few fledgling snakes as well, coming out from her chinny chin chin. With my horrifying sketch in place, it's time to move on to line work, to polish my Medusa up, add some shading, and bring it all together for a reference that I can follow through my sculpture. I get the ball rolling with a wooden base that I put together to create a plinth that I can sculpt on, cutting and gluing together chunks of foam to slowly form a rough, wide-headed silhouette. So many of you have been asking if I can paint my next monster, so I'll be sculpting with a new medium this time. Epoxy Sculpt is a two-part clay that you thoroughly mix together, and once it's all mixed in one uniform colour, you have about two to three hours working time. It hardens over 24 hours, becoming really strong and paintable. It's pretty tacky and tricky to work with, and with only an hour left, I was really fortunate that nothing happened to make this process even more difficult. It came with little warning. The storms were the most destructive in years and years. Hundreds of power lines damaged by falling trees, plunging half a million homes and businesses into darkness. Okay, we're rolling. Uh, so, interesting turn of events. This project must be cursed by the gods themselves because uh, the power has cut, the weather is bonkers. The problem is I've used a huge amount of epoxy clay that has been mixed. This is like almost a tub's worth that if I don't get it into a state that I can let it cure overnight and come back and do another layer, it's all going to be not only wasted material, but wasted time. And we can't have that. So I'm just going to get a big battery, hook up the lights and keep going. So this has happened once before. We've run the, the whole studio on this, which is a car battery inverter, which was plugged in 100% battery. So we can at least make it for the next hour. I couldn't have scripted this much drama. This is fantastic. I have no idea what's gonna happen now. Oh, ah, whoops. Okay, I think I want that. Don't know what that is. What's this? Don't need it. That's the fan. I'm gonna have to survive.
Okay. I just, hang on, I just need to see if I can get this fan away. <laughs> please don't cut out, please don't cut out, please don't cut out. Okay, let's go. Now don't let this step fool you. I am not sculpting yet. I'm just making the armature still, but because this character is so bulky, I'm using the same clay I'll be sculpting with to fill out the mass underneath. Once I have rough face shape and proportions, I'm happy with it. It's time to finish my armature with the wires that will become Medusa's snakes. By power twisting armature wires together for added strength and texture for tomorrow's clay to grab hold of, I stab them into place and pose them ready to set aside for the whole thing to cure to come back to tomorrow. I think I'm done. This is Technically the armature, I'm sculpting on top of this. This is just meant to hold the shape. If I'd have stopped when the power went out, it would have obviously been a huge waste of time. I would have had to start again, basically. But this is something I can work on top of and I can actually wrap for the day. Power's still out, but that's okay. This is gonna cure overnight. We'll be able to come back. Hopefully the power will be on. We can just keep going. This is uh, starting, to, starting to capture the vibes that I laid down though. I'm loving it. Now, just because the power's out, that ain't gonna stop me from playing mobile games. And just because I'm playing mobile games and relaxing, doesn't mean I've stopped being productive. Thanks to this video's sponsor, Mistplay. Mistplay is a loyalty app for mobile gamers that enables you to turn the time you use playing mobile games into rewards that you can claim, earn loads of different rewards, including actual gift cards you can spend online by simply browsing and playing mobile games on Mistplay, just like you normally would anyway. There is a huge catalogue of games, so you definitely will find your flavour, whether you're into tycoon or crafting games, arcade games, strategy games, exploration, puzzle, adventure, creative games, Misplay has it all. The more you play, the more you earn, which you can use to unlock gift cards from your favourite brands like Amazon, Walmart, PlayStation, Xbox, and loads more. Over $100 million worth of gift cards have already been redeemed by gamers like you and me from just browsing and playing games on misplay. You know, I think I might like to rack up enough points from playing games like Mech Arena and Brawl Stars to claim a gift card and earn myself a torch. Download the misplay app by clicking the link in the description today and using my link, misplay.com slash jazza, and use the code jazza50 in the app to score yourself 50 free points and get started towards earning your first gift card. A huge thank you to misplay for sponsoring this video and supporting the channel. It literally helps keep the lights on when the power's running. <laughs> the sculpting process is pretty straightforward. I build up the clay in clumps and slowly shape it towards resembling my Medusa design, starting with a face and slowly working in more detail after the basic shapes are blocked in. Now here's a really cool way to get leathery skin texture, which is especially effective on monsters like this. You lay down a layer of cooking wrap over the top of your sculpted skin, and just by gently carving in rough diagonal lines in two directions, creating sort of X's all over the skin, when you peel away that plastic wrap, it shows a really awesome skin texture that was pretty easy to achieve. After all the details on the skin texture and the front of my face are in, I stab armature wires into the front chin flaps of my Medusa so that when this area cures a bit more, I can come back and add my snake beards later. With the wires now covered with clay, roughly shaped to be serpentine, I wanted a way to add loads of snaky textures really fast and easy. For the tops, I used this aluminium mesh, which is flexible and I used to achieve this awesome scaly effect on top of all the snakes and all along their backs. Then for the underbelly of all the snakes, I carved a custom inverse blade shape into some popsicle sticks, which I used to press texture into those bellies. Now that the head is ready to receive all the snaky goodness of her voluptuous sneak hair, I set myself a wormy production line to mass produce my textured snake bits. By this point, a few hours had passed since I sculpted the details of the front of the face, meaning that that area is now hard enough for me to go back there and add more freshly mixed epoxy sculpt to fill in the details of the mouth, complete with gross, sharp, tiny teeth, tusks, and of course, a slithering tongue. 
Hey, remember those weird beard wires I put in? Well, it's time to slap some little snakes on those. Then it's time to complete all of the snakes with their little heads hissing at us. My sculpture is nearly complete, but I want this to feel like an ancient statue. So I surround my wooden stand with air dry clay, which I roughly texture to look like stone to be the ancient plinth holding up Medusa's horrific head. Now it's just a matter of setting this all aside to fully harden overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Okay, I have to say, as a result of several days of sculpting, I have here the most detailed sculpture I've ever made. Now with those other monsters from description sculptures that I've done, I did them with monster clay, which you can't paint. And I had alluded to earlier on about working in this medium so that we can paint it. So I'm gonna gear up to doing that. First, I need to sort of seal this plinth that I've made out of air dry clay. It's sort of cracked and it doesn't super wanna adhere to the structure I've made there. So I'm gonna cover that in Mod Podge, whack it all with a heat gun and when it's all dry, give it all a nice coat in some spray paints, ready to paint. I am so happy with where this is at. And usually, like I've sort of said, I haven't painted these. So this feels finished to me and I'm in love with it. So much so that I'm a bit scared to actually paint it because this feels so finished and cool. I think that's sort of how you could tell that you're onto something good. You're afraid to continue. But also just how close to that sketch I ended up getting. Oh, I'm very satisfied. So satisfied and scared that I'm gonna do just a midway reveals to show this off right now because I'm really happy with this and then we'll get painting. But before that, let's just enjoy this a little bit. Okay, now we can take a deep breath and do the scary thing, which has got skin area and snake area. Upon briefly looking at colors of Mediterranean and Greek snakes in particular, a lot of them are generally brown, sometimes towards the yellow end of things. And it makes sense to paint her skin tone, a Mediterranean olive skin tone with blotches of violent red for where the snakes are erupting out and parts of the cheeks and face to make her look super angry. And then onto our earthy, but venomous looking snakes. And I have a few tricks I think will make this look really organic and really cool. The first hacky trick I'll be using is this Army Painter Speed Paint. This paint is more translucent than regular acrylic paints, which means that some of the details and shading of those base coat aerosols I've put down are gonna show through. It also builds up in some of the cracks and crevices, making it darker in those details, adding extra punch. This stuff is way more forgiving than regular paints. I can aggressively slap this stuff on and wet blend the various colors together on the surface of my statue, slowly blending the fleshier tones in place and more leathery tones on and around the snakes. The biggest challenge I'm facing is actually painting these snakes. There are so many nooks and crannies I've made here, it's almost impossible to reach everywhere with my brush. Fortunately, because I can work so aggressively with the speed paint paint, I can effectively just load up my brush, shove it in with juicy stabbing in the gaps until I cover every single part of this model. Next, I build up a few more layers of this speed paint in various places to create more contrasts in the folds and shadows of the skin and more darkness and texture on the snakes. Now it's time to move on from the speed paints to traditional paints, more opaque and more controlled. I dry brush and blend in throughout to more planned highlights and colors. I want to create more tonal variation in my piece at this point, so I start working greens into the snakes to complement the yellow underbellies. And where the skin is currently looking a bit red and monotone, I softly work in purples and blues subtly into the shadows and yellow over top the highlighted areas, creating much more tonal variation and interest and a much more blotchy, fleshy look. All right, every step from now on is one of those wow steps making huge impact. Starting with the eyes and a black and purple brush blended in and sinking around the deeper areas, pushing the eye sockets further into the face. 
And then there's onto the creepy details of the mouth, from the tongue to the tiny teeth and the tusks. Next, I paint the eyes with a sickly pink, which I slowly blend towards a light yellow until I have some very ill-looking bloodshot eyes, complete with an extremely piercing sharp yellow rim around the pupil. These eyes need to look horrifying, because they are the last thing Medusa's victims see before they turn to stone. To add my finishing flair, I coat the face with matte varnish and use gloss varnish selectively on the snakes. I want them to look extra slippery. Then I go on to fill in the areas I couldn't reach with aerosol with a simple brush on the gloss varnish. I continue to use the same selective wetness on the eyes and the mouth. It's time to finish my piece off with the most disturbing detail of all. This craft glue, which is so tacky and sticky, it makes for the perfect, disgusting drool being dragged out with the tongue from the freshly opened mouth. I am delighted to introduce you to the horrifying Medusa, the way she was originally imagined. Kind of speechless and genuinely horrified. I can totally imagine seeing this and turning into stone. I am, I'm really glad I went about this in a way that let me paint it because uh, those details and the punches of colour and grossness just add so much to a monster. Let me know if you think I've taken it far enough or too far. And if you liked this video, there are loads of other Greek monsters or ancient creatures I could do, but I need to know you want it. So please hit the like button. Subscribing, of course, helps the channel and make sure you will see that video. And if this video gets over a million views, maybe I'll tackle Cerberus or the top comment. Let me know what you think down below. But otherwise, that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.